Hey, we got a few minutes after the 2 o'clock hour. It's a very busy day here on Wall to Wall Country. Hey, everybody, it's KC hanging out with you. And um, by busy, I mean we've got uh, some uh, talent coming uh, on board the show today. That's right. We've got a lot of things going on on the Wall to Wall Country show. And uh, first up, first up on the Wall to Wall Country show today is a gentleman that... Um, He's kind of gotten uh, a little bit busier in the last couple of weeks. He recently moved from Knoxville to Nashville, and uh, he is pursuing his dream of a country music industry icon, or at least he's hopefully on his way anyway. Everybody, I am going to uh, make welcome uh, our guest for this afternoon, Mr. Nick Hickman. Hey, Nick, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me on. Oh, absolutely. So we are very excited to have you on board. And uh, every week we do this wall-to-wall country show, and we always feature a very special guest that um, kind of tells us a little bit about what's going on in the Nick Hickman world. Uh, um, I think you've got some exciting news to talk about. You've got an EP. You've got a video out there. But let's go back just a little bit and kind of give people a little bit of background of where Nick comes from and how you got uh, from Knoxville to Nashville and uh, how's uh, things going with your uh, uh, country music dream there, Nick. Why don't you give us a little background information for my listening audience? Nice. Well, that's a lot of info, but... Uh, <laughs> the short version. <laughs> yeah. Grew up in a small town, lived in Knoxville, went to the University of Tennessee. Uh, I dabbled in music, different, different genres, just trying to figure out who I was as an artist for a while. Uh, and then started doing the country thing and, and picking up momentum and it just made sense and it fit and it's just, it's it's what I was meant to do. And started making the commute to and from and that was just becoming a hassle to drive sure. hours, seven hours round trip. So finally I think I just decided, you know what, if, if I want to do this, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to move to this city where I know that I belong and that it will enhance me as an artist. Right. So, I moved up here because that's the one thing people don't know about this city. This city will make you great. This city will make you better because everybody here is is better. Than you. They're better writers. They're better singers. They're better performers. And being around that kind of talent, if you truly have a drive and a desire to to pursue this and to do this career, being around that kind of talent will really drive you to be the best that you can be. So, I think you know moving up here has has truly helped me become the best version of Nick that I can be. Nice. So, nice. So moved up here, and that's where I'm at now, you know, diving into this thing full steam. And uh, now you, uh, you, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> trying to do too many things at once here. You know how that goes, multitasking, bad yep. idea. Um, now you actually have some songs out there. You write almost all of your own music, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, so you're you're the you're the singer slash songwriter, kind of dude, um, and uh, you released uh, or you're going to release. Has this has not been released yet? Your three song EP that you're planning on getting out there soon? Because I don't have a date for that. No, it, uh, I have a date. Okay, so we released "Summertime" Southern Style. It's out now. It's the single that was currently on country radio. I've got another single coming out, "Tailgate Dance Floor," on January fourth that will be released to country radio. I wrote that one. Mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of buddies of mine, one of the same guys that I wrote Summertime with. And then we have another song called Rain that I didn't write that was written for me um, that will be that will round out the EP. Okay, all right. So you've got a couple of songs going on there, and you actually mm -hmm. uh, did a music video for Summertime Southern Style, and you have that out on YouTube. How's that doing for you? It's doing pretty well. I, I think the guy that did it, it did an incredible job, and I think he had a great vision for the song and, and you know, kind of what he wanted to do. Uh -huh. So I think it turned out great, um, and it's, it's truly helped, you know, boost did recognition for the song and tell a different side of the story that the lyrics can't tell. Uh huh. Now, did you did you feel like you had a, a input with uh, with it, you know, or were you kind of like lead, letting that creative over to the professionals, or do you feel like you had something to say about how you wanted the video to go? No, he, he pretty much had the direction, and I, I was all on board, especially the end, like the little twist that he put at the end where I kind of pay off the repairman to say it'll take a week kind of thing. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I love that part. He had some really cool ideas. So, I mean, it, it's easy to take a step back when, you know, people have advice that's substantially better than yours. Right, right. 
Well, I mean, you know, I mean, but I, some some artists are still kind of like dabbling in that, you know. Um, they kind of they have a vision for it because if you wrote the song, I'm sure there's a story behind it. Uh, is there a story behind "Summertime Southern Southern Style"? <laughs> Actually, not really. We, oh, <laughs> we're just passing around ideas in the studio. Okay, okay. So it's kind of didn't didn't come from a personal experience or anything like that. No, no, we were just. Just trying to write a hit, and that's, that's what we wound up writing. Okay. Now, you've had some other success uh, that probably, uh, like I would believe, 99% um, helped you kind of move along a little bit. When you were on Nash Next, you want to tell our, our folks a little bit about that experience? Yeah, I mean, that was a great experience as far as exposure goes. It, it's it's kind of opened the door to, to new people. Uh, new followers, new subscribers, new listeners, new fans, etc. So, I mean, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have done that. Um, mm -hmm. So, it was a really cool experience. I've never, I've never in my entire life entered a competition. Um, just never found the desire to do it. But a buddy of mine was like, "Just give this one a try. It can't hurt. It's something new, something cool." So, I tried it, and I think, I think that it was a great thing. Well, I mean, you got into the top 25, and if it's like. Uh a lot of those other ones, I mean, it it took some weeding down to get there, so you have you managed to get past a good chunk of people to get into that position as a contestant. Oh, yeah, and before I was eliminated, I was actually in the top 20, I think. Oh, okay, okay, so, awesome. Yeah, it, it was cool. It, it, it was a several, several week, couple month process to eliminate, but yeah, there were several phases. Okay, awesome. Well, congratulations on that, because uh, that's something nice that you can always put, you know, on the old resume. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, exactly. and you know, and and you make connections with those shows. I'm sure you know. You meet people, and you kind of make some connections, and and help you get get a little bit further, or at least introduced to people. I would think. Um, exactly. You know, people like uh, this gentleman who is a production partner to Jenga. Uh, you want to tell us what Jenga is? Yeah, Jenga is the. Uh production company that the producer of this these two songs that I'm releasing in January okay. uh, owns he's, he's one fourth owner I think in the company but they have they have a studio and a setup in California and then they also have one in Nashville as well. And what's these two shows that you're releasing in January? Tell us about those Well the two songs Tailgate Dance Floor and Rain he's oh, okay. releasing both. Okay. okay so these songs are not available yet um for anybody to get their hands on, even through electric media? No, ma'am. No, they're not ready yet. They won't be ready until probably... I, actually, it might be January 4th. Oh, okay. I'm not 100% sure on that. I know the release date to the 4th, but I don't know as far as iTunes and digital media is concerned. Now, are you, uh, are, when it comes to the digital media, are you a fan of that? Or are you a fan of the old classic style where you would be preferring to make hard copies and get them out? Uh, I know there's like a huge divide line when it comes to artists and it's not necessarily older artists to new artists it's just some people have a preference where they they like releasing it electronically and then other people are like no I want to do the hard copy I want to do the CD I want to get it in store shelves I want to do that where do you fall uh, for that Nick? I'm a fan of digital I mean I, I don't hate on the old fashioned way I don't mind making a CD and packaging it and putting it in the store and selling it that way but I love digital it's, it's quick it's instant um Less work, honestly. Mm -hmm. Less expense up front. So I mean, it's I'm a fan of digital. Yeah, that's good. And and that's how you're gonna. That's how you have summertime Southern style out. And that's the way you're planning on releasing the other two songs off the EP. Electronic. Yeah. And I, no, I think we'll do both. I think we'll do digital, and I think we'll release an actual uh, EP. Okay. You know, to have something to sell at shows, and you know, because there might be people that want physical copies. Do you, do you find that you're listening when you when you're playing shows? People are asking you for that kind of stuff. That you know they're listening to your music and they're like, "Oh, we want to take it home with us." Uh, are you finding people are interested in that kind of thing? Yeah, people ask. I think it's kind of died off. I've, I've been performing for years, so I think it's kind of died off. Uh -huh. As as you can see and see a rise in the digital digital world, I, I, I really think that it's it's kind of died off. People still ask. People still want a physical CD. Yeah. Um, but. I don't. I don't think the the need or desire is as great as it used to be. Huh. That's interesting. Um. That's yeah. I I find that interesting. Um. Because I think there are people who still. Maybe it's because I'm older. <laughs> I like to have. 
I like to have it in my hands, you know, put it in my car. I have a, I have a car that has a CD player, you know, so <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. you know, it's kind and of... I used to be the same way. I used to go out once a week. I would go once a week and buy a CD uh -huh. of, of my favorite artist or, or something, but I, I would do that once a week. Now, I just go to iTunes and my, I have an iPhone, so my card information is stored in there. I just click <laughs> iTunes, buy the songs, just download it to my phone. I, I don't, I don't have that. I, I have a car that has a CD player. <laughs> Did you miss that part? With that, though. <laughs> yeah, I have a car that has a CD player. I don't. I don't have. A, I have too not too much of that electronic stuff. So it's kind of funny. So, um, but uh, yeah. So that's kind of cool. Now, are you planning uh, on release? Are you going to be doing um, some sort of tour with this music? Are you planning on hitting the road next year? Tell us about some plans that you might have in the future. Yeah, yeah the, all of this is in preparation of, of trying to hit the road next summer. I think is the, is the goal. Uh huh. Um, we're going to really work this first single, and then by the time we release the second single towards summer of next year to radio, uh, you know, I'll have a little bit more of a push behind me uh -huh. and backing. And then that, that's the goal is to get tour support for next summer. Um, good. I, now, one of the other quick questions I want to ask you, we're going to take a quick break, and I want to come back with your song, and then if you have a few more minutes, there's a few things I'd like to talk to you. But... Um, uh, a lot of artists sometimes one of the ways that they get a little bit of recognition is they tend to go out and do um, things for m maybe like a, a special cause um, and, and everybody has kind of like a, their own sort of thing are you in that boat do you do you have something that kind of tugs at your heartstrings when somebody says hey listen could you perform for us for this or for that is there something that comes to mind or are you kind of like you play the field whoever n want, needs you to play at some sort of special event you'll you'll find the way to do it yeah and, and that, that's the thing we're trying to we're trying to focus on narrowing it down to a single thing that i stand for right but typically in the past i have trouble honestly and it, it's sad to say but it's true i have trouble saying no uh -huh. so it could be an organization for people that are trying to uh, maintain recycling <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, sure, I'd love to play. Let me let me come be a part of it. You know, because yeah. I feel like if these people are that passionate about something, because I'm passionate about everything. I think that everything is beauty and everything is a great creation and it's all a blessing. Nice. Truthfully, that's just how I feel. Uh -huh. So, I mean, if these people are this passionate about their cause and, you know, they, they think enough of me to want me to come be a part of it and represent, you know, them, nine times out of ten I'm going no matter what. Right. I'll right. do whatever it takes give of my time give of my money my whatever it takes I'll, I'll do oh that's nice that's nice that's really nice and you know i have artists who are like they they focus in on one thing but i think those are that's nice too because everybody wants to focus on the big causes but like you said there are other causes out there that are just as important to the people who are doing them so you know oh, yeah. you know that's nice that people like you will still take the time and go you know i've never even maybe if you've never even heard of their organization before you know but like you said, if it's important to them, it makes it important to you, and that's really kind of cool. And there you have it, a little something from Mr. Nick Hickman right here on the Wall to Wall Country Show. His single that is out right now, if you liked it, you can get your hands on it with uh, uh, your electronic account, whether it's uh, the iTunes, the Amazons, the Spotify. It's all the way out there across the board. Just uh, search Nick Hickman and Summertime Southern Style. Well, you can't say that three times fast. I don't know about you, Nick. No, you, you really can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be tripping over my tongue. Um, but there you go. It's a good song. You know what? And that, that's a good summer song. It has that summertime feel. I could see people out in the field waving their beverages in the air and, and hanging out in shorts and summertime warm sun. And I just, that's a good song. I think it's a good one for you there, Nick. Well, thank you very, very much. Yeah, I think you're uh, you're hitting the nail on the head, and I'm looking forward to hearing the other ones, those other two songs that you're uh, planning on getting out there uh, next spring, some uh, January sometime or or whatever. Maybe it uh, it could be uh, like a late Christmas present for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we'll consider a late Christmas present. <laughs> there you go. Now, are you uh, a social media kind of guy? Are are you all about uh, the social media fun? Yeah. Yeah, I love social media. I think it's a great way to connect with people, especially and, especially in our digital technology-driven society. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, what do you find that people like to communicate and and uh, hang out with you and and chat with you on the on the Facebooks, the Twitters, and the things like that? Yeah, I, I really do. Truthfully, um, what's been one of the most surprising things that um, people have? 
you know, maybe contacted you about it, as someone maybe said, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm connecting with your song or, you know, do you, do you find that there's a, a, a deeper connection with the social medias or do you think it's all kind of like up there fun? Where are you? And da, 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 da. How do you feel about that? Uh, I think it's, I think it can be very 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 connecting. Uh, there there's been I'm not going to list any names, but there's been two to three people that I've made long lasting friendships that, that we've, we've maintained communication. You know, and it it might not be summertime, but other songs that I've written in the past that have helped people or or you know been that that soundtrack for someone uh-huh. um, along the way. You know, I, that's been huge for me as far as connecting with with people like that and there's been there's been several instances three that come straight to the top of my head but and in other states and all around all around the you know the united states so that's cool in and of itself mm-hmm. but music's always going to be that music's always going to be a soundtrack to somebody's life some genre some song some band somewhere uh-huh. will always be the soundtrack to somebody's life when they're sad there's a song they go to when they're, they're ready to work out ready to run there's a song they go to uh-huh. You know, when they're happy, when they want to celebrate, when they want to worship, there's a song that everybody goes to. So, you know, music is already the tool, mm-hmm. but having this social media platform that, like, maybe somebody in West Virginia can't get to a show in Nashville, maybe I don't play the West Coast that much. Right. You know, it's a great way for them to connect to me here in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, I think that's a smart way to look at things because, um, you know, you're gonna, you eventually you're gonna be expanding your realm of where you're going to be performing and it's a way to reach out to those people and say hey listen you know our circle of of shows has now expanded and it's going to be out into this area and out into this area and out into that area and the people who are becoming your fans maybe right not right next door will be uh excited to be a part of that to say hey i knew you were coming i saw it on facebook i'm here to watch your show and that gives you a neat connection too for those people who are who are looking forward to you expanding that that travel circle, you know? Exactly, yep. And 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 getting their hands on your music and, and your T-shirts and your hats and all that kind of stuff. You know, I think because people really like that connectivity. I think it. I, sometimes I really think that the person one-to-one connectivity gets lost a little bit in today's electronic world. Um, you know, we kind of get a little disc. It's like it's kind of like two-face. One way it brings people together, but in another way, you kind of lose that one-on-one person face-to-face time. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't know. It's kind of weird. I do. I do. You know, and it's nice when you can have that both ways, where people can walk up and shake your hand and say, "Hey, I like your music, and this is what your song means to me here," and and stuff, and and pat them on the back and give them a hug and that kind of stuff. <laughs> I agree. Uh, are you on the the Twitters? Are you on all of the medias there, Nick? I am, yeah, and I, I stay pretty active on them, and I, I I try to maintain all the accounts myself or my team. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if if I'm not maintaining it 100, percent I I have an eyeball on it and I see what's being done and what's not being done in case I need to personally respond or something. So I, I I try to stay very active in every aspect of social media. Awesome. Well, that's good to know. So, is there anything you want to share with the audience to give them a little heads up? I mean, I know you're doing the music. You've got your your video out there. Um, maybe some touring next year. Anything else you got under your wing that you'd like to share with the listening audience up here in Pennsylvania? And you know, you ever expand that circle to up here? We'd love to have you in the studio. All my guests are always welcome with an open door here at PPR. So keep that in mind. But um, anything? Yeah, absolutely. Anything, uh, anything kind of in the works that you can talk about, or is it all still kind of hush hush? Uh, there's a few things I can talk. There's a lot that's happening. Some of it, most of it's hush hush for now. And, uh-huh. You know, until you have details ironed out, you never want to, you know, reveal too much. But sure. uh, we are currently working on a music video for the single Tailgate Dance One that's coming out January 4th. So that should be really cool. I'm kind of excited about that as well. Okay. Um, and then, there, and then there's a few other things that, that'll be announced over the next couple of weeks. I think that might be the only thing I can talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just did a photo shoot, so there's some photos that <laughs> should be coming soon. Little stuff like that I can definitely talk about. Well, you guys want to find this guy. It's uh, Nick Hickman. Um, you can find him on Facebook. That simple. Uh, just uh, the, is it the Nick Hickman? <laughs> Facebook, the yeah, Nick Hickman. He- the Nick Hickman. Hey, there's another Nick Hickman out there that took all the Nick Hickman, so I had to be the Nick Hickman. 
<laughs> You're the Nick Hickman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want just Nick Hickman. You want the Nick Hickman. Um, but uh, make sure you find him. And, of, of course, you know, musician, band. Uh, you know, you get your information about the new single of summertime, Southern Style, on your Facebook page. Um, hometown, Knoxville, living in Nashville. you got the website on there. Uh, for your for your website and your band and information and stuff like that, which can also take you to the Facebook and the Twitters and all that kind of stuff. But, um, hey, listen, you know what? I really appreciate you hanging out with the show uh, today, and we wish you all the best of luck. And uh, keep me in mind when you got something new and exciting going on, or if you ever happen to be up here in Northeast PA, we'd love to have you, Nick. I most certainly will. I'm beyond grateful. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to sit and talk with Oh, schlub like me. Well, well, hey, we appreciate it. And if it weren't for people like you, I wouldn't have any music to play. So <laughs> it's a two-way street. We appreciate you guys. And, um, you know, your dedication to the country music industry. Uh, good luck in everything. And, uh, you know, and like I said, you know how to reach me. Get in touch with me. Let me know what's going on. And uh, you got some new news. We'll get you on in the spring again. Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much. All right, take care, Nick. We appreciate your time. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.